Pray without ceasing. Nirantar Pratna Kare. As a church, we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request. Agar aap me se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe pratna ki zarurat hai, to hum aapke saath pratna karna chate hai. You can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats, the same link is available where you can just click on that, put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us. Aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap, aapko mil jayega, us link ko daba ke click kiye jayega aur uh, us form ko aap fill up kar dijega, aapka naam, number aur pratna ka jo request hai आप उसमें भर दीजिएगा और सबमिट बटन दबा दीजिएगा ये प्रार्थना का जो रिक्वेस्ट है हमारे पास आ जाएगा और हम में से कोई आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आवर चर्च फ्रॉम आवर लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विथ यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well. TCFC family meets every morning at 7.30 a.m. and every evening at 7.30 p.m. for an hour of intercession and worship through an app called Zoom. On Tuesdays and on Thursdays, we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information, you can contact anyone from TCFC Church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media. Hope to see you all.
Pray without ceasing. Nirantar Pratna Kare. As a church, we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request. Agar aap me se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe pratna ki zarurat hai, to hum aapke saath pratna karna chate hai. You can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats, the same link is available where you can just click on that, put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us. Aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap, aapko mil jayega, us link ko daba ke click kiye jayega aur uh, us form ko aap fill up kar dijega, aapka naam, number aur prathna ka jo request hai, aap us mein bhar dijega aur submit button daba dijega ये प्रार्थना का जो रिक्वेस्ट है हमारे पास आ जाएगा और हम में से कोई आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आर चर्च फ्रॉम आर लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विथ यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. TCFC family meets every morning at 7.30 a.m. and every evening at 7.30 p.m. for an hour of intercession and worship through an app called Zoom. On Tuesdays and on Thursdays, we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information, you can contact anyone from TCFC Church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media.
Praise God. It's good that another Sunday we have come together and gathered, maybe not in presence, but in one spirit, to worship our Lord. Before we start the Sunday service, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given us, Lord, Father Lord. Thank you, Father, that throughout this week, Lord, you watched over us, Lord. You kept us safe as the apple of your eye, Lord, Father Lord. Father Lord, as we are gathered here today together, Lord, Father Lord, to hear from you, Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you take absolute control, Lord, in the word that is to be given, in the prayers and intercessions, and as the worship is being led. Father, we pray, Lord, that you take absolute control, Lord. Come and touch us and change our lives, Lord. We wait upon you. In his grace we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I just wanted to share with you something that uh, touched my heart. And uh, this is from uh, Jeremiah chapter 31. This is where the Lord is speaking to those people who have been exiled, who came through a lot of difficulties and came through the siege. And uh, this is the word of hope that the Lord gives to them. It is in... Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 7. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nation. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Here the Lord, in the, through prophet Jeremiah, gives a message to the uh, remnant. He gives three points actually. He says, Proclaim my goodness, Worship and praise me and come with prayer and intercession. These three points, I think it applies to our times also, right? We are also going through difficult times. So we also need to approach our Lord with, uh, with uh, praise and worship. And we need to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. And especially what the Lord has spoken to us through his word. We need to proclaim that into our lives. And with prayer and intercession, carry all our needs before the Lord. With these three things, we will, we will receive grace to grow through, go through these difficult times. Let me just uh, tell you about what the Lord spoke to me also. It is from uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. It says, it says so, And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And maybe to those who are in the front line also, and uh, health workers, I think this applies to you also. You know, if many people are afraid of whether they will lose their life because of the coronavirus pandemic. But here it says that our life is hid with Christ God. And, the, and verse 4 it says, Christ who, who himself is our life. So we... Do not have to be worried about anything. Our life is safe with Christ. It is hidden, hidden in Christ. And Christ himself is our life. And we can, we can be encouraged and we can go through these difficult times because what is valuable to us that is safe with our Lord. So I hope these words have encouraged you. And as we go into a time of worship, Brother Sahi will be leading the worship. Let us come together in one spirit and worship and uh, and remember the goodness of God in our life. Amen. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun Fear you won't define me, cause that's what my father does Fear you won't define me, cause that's what my father does Ooh, lay your burdens down Shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. The Bible's not the end game. Oh
story isn't over If the story isn't good Fear is never final when the fall is in Fear is never final when the fall is in
Got a revival. 
got a revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, and I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, got a revival, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 Therefore I say to you whatever things that you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them Church let us believe what we are going to pray for today shall we join our hearts in prayer Father Lord we thank you for who you are we worship you, God, Jesus, Lord. We exalt your name, hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you, God, Jesus, for we could come together in this manner from different places, so Lord Jesus. You have called us into one family to worship you, Father God, Jesus, Lord. What a mighty God we serve, O Lord. What a mighty and awesome God you are, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you had kept us safe, O God. You had protected us, O God, Jesus, Lord. You have been so good to us, O Lord Jesus. Your loving kindness never fails for us, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Abba Father. Today, Lord Jesus, as a church of God, Jesus, Lord, we look up to you, Father, for the nation and also the city. As your word says in the book of Jeremiah, Lord, but seek the welfare of the city where I sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for you will find your welfare. Heavenly Father, we pray that God, as we rely on you, Jesus, for this pandemic to end, God, Jesus, we trust you and we believe you, Lord God Almighty that, Lord, you will bring health and safety upon our nation. We pray, we pray for our authority, our prime minister, the chief ministers, our cabinets, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That, Lord, you will protect them, O Lord Jesus, and you will guide them, O Lord Jesus. You will strengthen them these days of our Father, Lord. Thank you, God Almighty. We praise you, God Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, O oh God, Jesus, Lord, Lord, you know our hearts, O oh Lord Jesus, and we pray that God, Jesus, as you have enabled us to taste your goodness in this land, help us, O oh God, Jesus, Abba, Father, as we read from 1 Peter, O oh Lord Jesus, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoer, 
they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation Abba Father Lord Jesus it is our prayer that Lord we conduct ourselves with God Jesus Lord in maturity Lord Jesus in the purity and love that Lord God people will know that the God that we serve and Lord Jesus we will be the salt and the light to the nation and to the people around us oh God Jesus father we commit oh Lord Jesus the youth in of our land oh God Jesus you act in the places the oh Lord Jesus they don't have job oh God Jesus Lord Abba we pray for our children's education Oh Lord, they are suffering these days, O oh God, Jesus, Lord. O oh Lord, you will act upon it, O oh Lord, Jesus. Father, we pray for your healing upon the people who are sick among us, O oh God. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals the Lord, Jesus. God, we pray that, Lord Jesus, you will touch them and heal them completely, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for who you are. You never change as a God, Jesus. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the word that is going to come to us, Lord. Give us a, the ear that we will listen to you, Father. Oh, God, we thank you for your servant, to God. Bless and anoint him, oh Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, God. We give you all glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning to all of you and a very warm welcome to this particular service of TCFC. As we go into this particular morning service, what I would like to speak to you about as we go through these times which seem to be so very overbearing upon us is about a topic which is quite close to my heart and has been something that the Lord has been putting in my heart these days. And what comes to me is actually the topic of joy and peace. So what I would be speaking to you today is about how to find joy and peace in your life. And you may think that, you know, why is it that we need to talk about joy and peace? Well, if you take up any newspaper in the morning, you look at the front pages, you log into any news channel, the amount of content that hits you, the news, the articles, the headlines that keep bombarding at you is something which you will find is extremely depressing at times. If you look at, you know, what is the situation to uh, us in India, we definitely do see that the aspects of COVID is something which is going through the roof. The last few days, we have been clocking more than 60,000 cases in a day. And if you look at COVID, therefore, the first such case was reported as way back as 30th of January 2020. And it all started with the first confirmed case being reported in Kerala. And it was a student who returned from Wuhan. And today, if you look at it, we have most easily crossed 25 lakh cases. We have about 49,000 deaths in the country. And if you look at the situation around us, it doesn't seem to be exactly uh, cheerful at all. You look at the natural disasters and calamities, there are floods, there are cyclones which have hit our country this year. Locusts have raged a war against the crops that have been there in Rajasthan and in the northern parts of India. So in such a case, what is it that awaits us? If you look at our own situations at our workplace, it's not something where we can go back very easily these days and start working normally. Everybody is talking about a new normal. So what is this new normal? It is all about fear and chaos which seems to be beset upon us. If you look at 
how the government is responding. Yes, they are trying to do the best. And if you look at how our health uh, sector and our medical staff are responding, well, they are doing their very best and they are trying to battle and they are at the front lines today. If you look at the economy, it, it is not something that gives us very good, great things to cheer for. In all of these cases, therefore, you know, is it a situation which is about gloom and doom? And if you look at other cases of man-made uh, disasters or problems, then those are also a plenty. There are instances of accidents and uh, incidents like the Air India Express uh, crash landing that took place. You look at the lives that are lost there, the riots in Delhi, not too far in the past. So there are again, you know, man-made disasters and problems as well. Now, given all of this, what is it that we should really look to and what is it that we can look forward to? Well, definitely looking into the newspaper headlines every morning is not exactly going to give you cheer. So then the question is, what is it that we as children of God should do? Or what is it that we can do as a response? The answer is, I believe, very clear and very simple. I think your mornings should start with a look into what the word of God has to say to you. Because the word of God very clearly has a message for you. And God has a message for you. You should begin your day with prayer. And that is, I believe, what most churches are doing and most children of God are doing. These are very good responses, I would say, in these times, these present times. And when we see people who are around us without hope, it is up to us to show and be a beacon of hope to the people and to our neighbors, to our friends, to the community around us. With that in mind, when I had been praying, the passage that was given to me was the passage of what Paul writes to the church in Philippi. The passage that I want to share with you is that of Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing as I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add his blessings by the reading and hearing of his word. If you look at this particular passage, you know, it seems so very strange, so very unbelievable if you ask me. How is it that a person who is sitting in a prison and that to a Roman prison and he is writing and exhorting the people, the church in Philippi to rejoice. He says, always be glad. He says, rejoice and then again I say rejoice. How is it Paul, that it is possible for you to rejoice and talk about rejoicing. Haven't you heard that the government is after us? The Roman emperor has ensured that we do not have an easy life. Even if I come to the Lord, you know, it is not an easy life that I am going to lead. If that is the case, how can you ask us to be joyful? And how can you ask us to rejoice? 
Now, this is where the difference is, and this is where I would like to stress this particular point, that when Paul is writing, Paul is not writing from a place of rejoicing or happiness that he has in his life at that particular point in time. Instead, what we have to understand that he has actually gone through a tremendous, uh, you know, a tremendous number of uh, uh, issues in life. If you look at the journey that he took from Jerusalem to Rome, it was not an easy one. From the time of his arrest to his incarceration for about two years, he waited and waited in Caesarea to get audience with the authorities, the governor. The governor changed. So Felix, who was the governor at that point in time when he was arrested, was replaced with Festus. And we know the history. If you really look at uh, Acts uh, and uh, the latter part of Acts is where you will find all that I am talking about. So very clearly, you know, Paul didn't have it easy. He didn't have things going for him. And even when he set off from Caesarea and there was a ship that took him, he had to change a ship. Not only that, you know, the ship that he went in was shipwrecked. And after the shipwreck, they, you know, went ashore and he thought that he was safe or people thought they were all good. But there you find that again, it is not as though, you know, death or peril has left him. We have the incident where Paul is attacked by a snake over there. But the interesting thing there is that there is indeed a miracle that God works for him. The snake and the snake bite is not able to kill uh, Paul at that time because his time had not yet come. And many times I would say this, my dear friends, that as we go through our struggles, as we go through our life, as we go through the troubles and difficulties and problems and trials of our life, it is only and only because God has us in his hands and we are in his palms that we are able to really you know, look confident or look better than what we really feel inside. And that is very, very, very clearly the case with Paul as well. We find that, you know, that he is not having any problems, even though he has been bitten by the snake. Not only that, he is able to now complete his journey and be in Rome. And even after he has reached Rome and he is supposed to be in front of the emperor, it is not as though he immediately is able to meet the emperor. He has to again wait in arrest. He has to wait uh, in bondage. And very clearly it also mentions uh, over there that all this while he was in chains or he was bound and he was taken as a prisoner uh, to all of these places. So right from the place of his arrest in Jerusalem to Caesarea to, you know, Malta and all of these places, we find that Paul was indeed, you know, treated as a prisoner and as a criminal. And, and that was the kind of suffering that he went through. Physical problems, shipwrecks, all of these put together, right? And the time that he is spending in Rome is not exactly one that is hopeful. What is it that he is looking forward to? The end to him is very simply that he is most likely to be sentenced to death. What kind of a life is that? What kind of a future is that? But there is something that Paul very clearly knows over here. And that is the reason why he is able to say that rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. And what is it that we also need to be doing? We need to be people who are not necessarily affected by circumstance. And when Paul is writing about joy, it is not about happiness that he is talking about. He doesn't say be happy and make everyone happy or be all happy always. 
or I am okay and you are okay. That is not what he is talking about. He is talking about joy and having a deep sense of, you know, peace and calm in his life. How is he able to do this? And Paul, how are you able to really do this at a time when you are going through all of this suffering yourself? For this, I would really say that he is able to do that because he lives not in the moment, but he lives for the future. And the future that he is living for is one that of glory, of one that is eternity with the God he loves so very dearly, with the Jesus that he met on the road to Damascus. That is the eternity and that is the hope that keeps him going. And which is why we know that it is not happiness he is talking about. So happiness could be something which, you know, you are happy because you got a race. Uh, you may be happy because you have a celebration of a birthday that is coming up. Or you may be happy very simply because you have a job and you are keeping it. But all of this happiness is something which is circumstantial. It is dependent on circumstances. You may be even very happy if I told you a joke. But joy is something which is far greater and far deeper than any of all this. Joy is something which is much different than the happiness that we often are aware of. If you look at the New Testament, and the New Testament, as you know, has been written in Greek. The word that has been used for joy is Cairo. And Cairo means that it is something which is not necessarily just devoid of, you know, sorrow or pain or troubles. But it is about a wholesomeness and a peace that you have in the Lord. So that is something that we find is the case with Paul and that is the reason why we find that Paul is able to say to himself, always be full of joy. Why? Because it is in the Lord he finds this joy. And he says to himself and also to the people in Philippi, and again I say, and it is an exhortation from him, rejoice or always again be full of joy. So our joy does not come from the situation or the circumstances. Our joy should come from or does come from uh, Jesus Christ and the presence of Jesus in our lives. If you look at the name Jesus, the name is again something that is synonymous with what God has promised to the people. If you, find, if you look into Isaiah, you find the mention of the name that is given to Jesus as a prophecy. Where Isaiah clearly says that a virgin shall give birth and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. If that is the case, my dear friends, what I would really like to say here is this, that we do not need to go on a long pilgrimage. We do not need to beat ourselves up. We do not need to go on some long distance, you know, trek in order to find peace and joy. We find joy because Jesus is in us, because God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And even Jesus, when he left and was taken up, into heaven, we find that it is really the promise that he gave to us, that he will send a comforter, someone to be with us. And that someone is the Holy Spirit. And today, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, you know that you have the surety and the guarantee of Holy Spirit in each of us. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And that is why we are able to have the presence of God reside in us, to abide in us. And this is the reason for our joy. And this, I would say, is the first such quality of what a Christian should be about. 
So that is something that we talked about from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. If you look at the second uh, verse, it says, Let everyone see you are considerate in all you do. Let everyone see. See what? So obviously there is something that people should visibly see and observe in you. And what Paul here is writing about is the word considerate, which means your gentleness, your reasonableness, your graciousness, your humility, your forbearance. All of these qualities should be something which is seen by people. So the question is, how do I see gentleness in a person? How do I see softness in a person? Is it about, you know, I push, right? A finger into my face and then say that, yes, you are soft, you are gentle. Well, advertisements may talk about gentleness and, and uh, you know, softness like that. But the word of God is much deeper and much more meaningful over here. What very clearly one may be able to say is this, that actually if you look at what a Christian should be is something that is very well written or very well spoken by Jesus Christ on the Sermon on the Mount. So if you look at the Sermon on the Mount, and that is Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, you find very clear references as to what a Christian should really do. And in particular, it is Matthew chapter 5, and in particular 39 onwards, you will find how a Christian should behave. And when Jesus was actually talking about all of this, this particular teaching was quite revolutionary for even the people in Israel. The Jews were born and you know, they were born into the law of Moses, right? And they were people who were keepers of the law and the Ten Commandments and all of the other things that they were expected to keep as a people. So very clearly they had the written word of God with them. And this is something that they wanted to ensure that they had imbibed in their lives very strongly. And when they tried to do that, what Mosaic law asked them to do was, if there is someone who you know, hits you and you lose an eye, then the person who's done that, and he's done that spitefully or with an intention to cause hurt, then even his eye should be taken. Now, people may say that, you know, how can you do this? And if you follow this particular, uh, you know, uh, situation or this particular teaching, then everyone in the world is going to be blind. But you have to really understand why Moses gave this law or why God gave this law to Moses. It was not about making people blind, but it was about retribution and stopping retribution or having a punishment which was commensurate with the crime that you committed. So Jesus, when he gave his revolutionary teaching, what he was actually saying is, if someone slaps you on one uh, cheek, what do you need to do? Slap him back? No. What he teaches on the Sermon on the Mount is very clearly, you need to show him the other cheek. And this is a teaching, if you keep reading below, right? you will find very clearly the teachings of Jesus Christ, which shook the people at that time. Not only then, but also right now for us, yesterday we have you know, celebrated Independence Day in India. My question is, you know, who do you associate the most with the freedom fight and independence for India? And most people will definitely answer this, that the person we can actually identify or associate the most with the freedom struggle in India is Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi himself was very clearly personally affected and touched by the teachings of Jesus Christ and in particular the Sermon on the Mount. Now does it mean that uh, 
Gandhi was a Christian? I don't really think so. If you read his book, My Experiments with Truth, you will find that it is not necessarily true. He was never a, a Christian in that sense. But he definitely was changed or affected or influenced by the teachings of Jesus Christ in this particular aspect. And this is how he brought the British Empire to its knees. And if in India we got our independence because of certain teachings that actually Gandhi imbibed in his life and lived it out, and applied the principles of that, and if he got independence for India, then what I would really say is that we as Indians or we as Christians in India, we have very big shoes to fill in. If we started living out the principles of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Jesus Christ, as Paul says over here, let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do then very clearly we will be able to make people understand, make our friends understand what is it that we mean by being a Christian. Now, why does Paul say all of this? He again reminds uh, the church in Philippi about this particular aspect. The reason is that remember the Lord is coming soon. That is the reason why you should do all of this. So very clearly his hope, his joy and everything is based on the promise of Jesus Christ coming very soon. Dear family, if we do this in our lives, how much more can we actually influence the people around us? The joy in our life and being considerate, our graciousness, our forbearance, our patience with people around us our attitude and our actions, they will definitely influence the people around us. Now let's look at the next two verses that I have before you from this passage. The second part of my message is about what Paul is talking to the people in Philippi about. The Philippian church very clearly had their share of problems. As I said, the early century church was no stranger to persecution. So very clearly the church there had its own share of difficulties. It is not just the problems or the worries of life in general about where will my food come from or my you know, next uh, pay, when is it going to come and all of those kinds of questions that they had in their lives. But it was also the fact that because they had become Christians, they had additional worries because they could be arrested just as uh, Paul was arrested and they could be just thrown into jails because the government of that day, the Roman Empire was not really favorable to the Christians. The Jews themselves were not really, you know, very, uh, uh, very positive to the Christians of the day. And therefore, you had religious opposition, you also had political opposition. So in such a case, obviously, there were many more reasons why they should have been really worried about. But what is it that Paul is now teaching the Philippian church? And the church in Philippi need to be told that don't worry about anything. Verse 6. But instead, what are you supposed to do? Pray about everything. So just as I started off and I said that what should be the Christian response these days to the situation around us, then it is not really about taking the newspaper and you know, having that early morning cup of tea, but rather if you look to the word, the word will actually motivate you. The word will reinstate you. The word will restore you. And I believe the presence of God will continue to be with you even as you look to the word. So which is why very clearly, you know, it says that don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. As we all know, worry is something which 
weighs a person down. Proverbs 12, 25 says, worry weighs a person down and an encouraging word cheers a person up. If that is the case, we need to look to the Lord and we need to bring our matters to the Lord. Paul is very clear in his teaching and he himself has experienced this time and again in his own life. And he says, tell God what you need. If you tell God what you need, whatever your needs are, tell him that you have problems in your marriage. Tell him that you have problems in your workplace. Tell him that you have problems with your studies. Tell him that you have problems with your neighbors or whatever the issues that you are facing. Paul says very clearly, you know, do not worry about anything, but pray about everything. And when you pray, what should you do? It should be with thankfulness. Thank God for all that he has done for you. If you start you know, doing what the song says, count your many blessings, name them one by one. Right? If you keep doing that, you will really understand what all are the good things that you have enjoyed. It says in the seventh verse, then you will experience God's peace. When? It says, then you will experience God's peace. So the question would be, when will you experience this? When you don't worry about anything and instead you pray about everything and you tell your God what you need because this God is your creator God. He is an almighty God. And when you put your trust in him, then very clearly it is possible for you to come close to him and be very confident in the fact that all that he does in his time is going to be indeed very beautiful and it will be the perfect thing for you. Just learn to trust in the Lord more and more because the love of God is something which desires what is best for us. Not only that, the wisdom of God is where God alone knows what is best for us. And the power of God is where you find it is something which can alone bring to pass what is best for you. So you have the love of God, the wisdom of God and the power of God all working together for us as we put our trust in him to this particular creator who is so very interested in each and every one of us. He is interested in you and your life. And that is why he looks to you to come closer to him. And when you do that, right, you will experience God's peace. The Greek word for peace over there is irene. So if you look at this particular verse, it a word, it is not just the absence of conflict or the absence of problem, but it is about well-being. It is about not just a positivity, but it is about wholesomeness. It is about health and overall holistic health. And therefore, this is something that God desires for you. Paul very clearly is saying this, that God's peace will be with you and this is a peace which human mind will not be able to make it or manufacture it. Only God can create it. And which is why I believe it says that which exceeds all human understanding. Now I had this uh, friend of mine sending me a WhatsApp message. He says, why just say rest in peace? Instead, it should be live in peace. And if you really look at it, you know, that is how God's peace is able to bring about a transformation in our lives. If you look at this peace, Paul very clearly again brings out another aspect, another dimension of that. Your hearts and minds will be guarded by this peace. It is almost like saying that it will be like a sentry or a soldier who is going to stand watch. 
So God's peace, his irony is going to keep watch over your hearts and minds. Is it going to just happen just like that? Not really. It will happen if you look at the last you know, portion of that particular verse. It says, as you live and abide in Christ Jesus, this peace of God will continue to guard your hearts and minds. We have such a wonderful promise from God. Not only do we not have to worry about anything, we just need to pray about everything. And we can come to a God, our own personal daddy, if you want to call him. And come to him with our needs and make it known to him. Because he is our father. And you don't need to really be ashamed of what you bring to your father. It may be your fears, your dreams, anything you can bring to him. And you will know that if your earthly fathers or in, you know, there is a Bible verse which says like this, that in Romans 8, 32, it says like this, since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? So if God the Father did not hold back Jesus, his own son, then do you think that he is going to hold back any other good thing? So if that is the case, if we continue to abide in Christ Jesus, as we look into another passage in John, it says like this, that abide in me and I will also abide in you. And when that happens, we find that the peace of God is going to reside in us and it will continue to give us the peace that is required in these times. Let's now look at the last couple of uh, verses. Verses 8 and 9 of Philippians. In summing up, in a way, Paul is talking about this particular aspect. There is one final thing that you need to do. What is it that you need to do? Fix your thoughts. A human mind is powerful. There are thoughts, experts say, you can have about you know, 2,500 to 3,300 thoughts in an hour. So a waking hour, you may have that many number of thoughts. If that is the case, you need to actually train your mind in order to fix it upon certain things. So what are those things that you need to fix your mind on? It says very clearly over here, things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. And think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. These are the things that we need to fix our thoughts on. It is not about, you know, the random things in life. So you need to have a certain, you know, discipline in your life. There needs to be a certain training up of your mind. Now, it is often said that sow a thought and reap an action. If that is the case, those actions are going to lead to habits. And those habits will lead to the character that is formed. Finality, it will actually even affect our destiny itself. If that is the case, my dear friends, isn't it important for us to come close to this God? Not only that, it is not just about fixing our minds, but also there is another aspect that we need to be very clear about. What is it? It is as what any you know, coach or any teacher will say, not only do you just rehearse in your mind what is going to be the things that you will do, but also getting down to doing it. So it says very clearly where you know, Paul is saying that church in Philippi, you need to also do something else. You need to keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. 
So Paul has written this letter to the church in Philippi. And I would really urge all of you to read this particular uh, letter to Philippians. Where it says so many good things about a church that he loved and you know, cherished so very closely in his life. He says that you need to keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. And everything that you heard from me and saw me doing. Again, there is this element of how there should be some kind of influence that you exert over the others around you. And when we do that, what Paul writes to the Philippian church is this, then the God of peace will be with you. Again, something which is very clearly a promise which is fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So the question you may ask is, how is it possible? I am just an average human being. I have so many weaknesses and so many things that I struggle with. My dear friends, what I would really say here is this, that it is not that I have achieved perfection. It is not that I have reached somewhere. But it is, as Paul says, I continue to press on. I continue to go and keep pursuing the things that are excellent. And when I do that, there is an empowering person right beside me. It is not a force. It is a very deeply intimate, you know, Christ or a savior who is with me. And through Holy Spirit, I am able to do much more than what I am going to be able to do if I just did it with my ability. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will be able to actually do far more and do many more things uh, than you originally imagined you could. So that is the kind of powerful life that Paul wishes for the church in Philippi. And not only the church in Philippi, to each and every one of us, as we read from the book of uh, Philippians. So when we read from the book of Philippians, we should remind ourselves that yes, there are things that are not happening well in our uh, country or in our city or in my life, in the here and now. But there is very clearly something else that is awaiting you. And you can have joy and peace even in these times. But there are certain things that we need to do ourselves as well. We need to make certain choices. Just as Paul is writing here about it. We need to commit to the Lord all that we are doing. We need to trust in him. We need to ensure that we put our trust not in you know, human things, but upon the Lord and his abilities. And our Lord is a mighty God. And he is able to turn around things. And that is something that is very clearly what Paul experienced in his life as well. So even though the situation around him was not something which was conducive, very clearly he lived for a, a hope that was much greater because he knew that the Lord's coming is soon. So that is something that we need to also keep on reminding ourselves. Remember the Lord is coming soon. If we do that, then we will continue to you know, exhort ourselves also that always be joyful or rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. And also the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will continue to guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. And as we consciously choose to pray about everything and committing everything to him and not worrying about anything. If we do all of these things, then the God of peace will definitely be with us. 
such a wonderful promise that Paul leaves for the Philippians over here. That is the same promise he is giving to you and me as well today. So the question is, will you take it and run with it or not? The choice ultimately is up to you. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this morning and a time that you helped us to come together like this and uh, worship you and to praise you and to listen to what your spirit has to say to us. Father, we pray that you would continue to talk to us as we go out this week and face a new week ahead of us. We pray that you would continue to be with us and fill our hearts and minds with your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, we pray and commit each of us, all those who are listening to us, we pray for them, their families, and everyone, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Abide with us and fill our hearts with joy and peace forevermore. Amen. Thank you once again for coming and uh, being part of this particular online service. We continue to encourage you to log in and attend these services. And there will be some more announcements. Kindly do pay attention to that as well. God bless you. Pray without ceasing. Nirantara Pratna Kare. As a church, we have raised prayer in these days and we would like to specifically pray for you if you have a personal prayer request. Agar aap me se kisi ko vyaktigat taur pe pratna ki zarurat hai, to hum aapke saath pratna karna chate hai. You can see in the description box a link given or in the live chats, the same link is available where you can just click on that, put your name and number and your prayer request and click on the submit button and the prayer request will be made available to us. Aap us description box mein ya live chat mein ek link aap, aapko mil jayega, us link ko daba ke click kiye jayega aur uh, us form ko aap fill up kar dijiega, aapka naam, number aur pratna ka jo request hai आप उसमें भर दीजिएगा और सबमिट बटन दबा दीजिएगा ये प्रार्थना का जो रिक्वेस्ट है हमारे पास आ जाएगा और हम में से कोई आपको कॉल करेंगे और आपके साथ प्रार्थना में टाइम स्पेंड करेंगे वन ऑफ अस फ्रॉम आवर चर्च फ्रॉम माय लीडर्स विल कॉल यू एंड विल बी विद यू इन दिस प्रेयर इन दिस टाइम ऑफ प्रेयर गॉड ब्लेस यू गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल TCFC family meets every morning at 7:30 a.m. and every evening at 7:30 p.m. for an hour of intercession and worship through an app called Zoom. On Tuesdays and on Thursdays, we have extended worship sessions. We encourage you all to join with us in this time of prayer. For further information, you can contact anyone from TCFC Church through WhatsApp or write to us through social media. Hope to see.